Hello and welcome to another chat. You've probably seen a lot of videos, a lot of articles about a new Chinese Ekrano plan. I was lucky enough to break that story to the world a couple of, well, a week ago um, when this picture emerged. And on the bottom left, you've got my first sketch of what I think we're looking at. Well, since then, a new picture has emerged, another one which gives it from a different angle and tells us quite a bit more about the vehicle. Had a little bit of time to think about it, and I want to share my thoughts, a sort of initial analysis. I'm H.I. Sutton, independent defense analyst, concentrate on unconventional naval warfare capabilities and strategy using primarily open source intelligence. Find me on social media, my website, and so on. So firstly, a little bit about Ekrano plans. The modern concept of them really is thanks to German inventor Alexander Lipsic. He was more famous actually during World War II for the Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet and other aircraft, but Ekrano plan is essentially a wings in ground effect vehicle. In fact, that's a more common and probably better name for it, more technical name. Ekrano plan is a Russian name. We'll come to that in a moment. You'll see this aircraft with very unconventional layout, something like a, a float plane. How it's working, and this is on the surface, obviously, but when it starts flying, it flies incredibly low, much lower, about half the height of its wingspan and is able to create sort of an air cushion. It, it disrupts the drag from the aircraft, from the wingtips particularly, and it makes it much more efficient. So it's more efficient than a seaplane flying at higher altitude. It's much faster than a boat. Quite attractive, very interesting. There's been a lot of designs following this, but by far the most famous ones are the Soviet ones, and that's where we get the name Ekrano plan. They're actually popularly known as Caspian Sea Monsters, because when they were first discovered by Western satellites, American satellites particularly, it wasn't clear you know, what they're all about. This is the first major one that was built, the Krano Plan KM. First flew in 1966, when it was by far the largest and heaviest aircraft ever built at that point, up until the late 80s, in fact. Really impressive. You can see why they call it Caspian Sea Monster. Look how low it is flying. Um, this one I don't think was able to fly much higher. There's a, another famous one was the A90. This was sort of second generation, more practical, and was an assault transport. So similar role to a hovercraft, it could carry armoured vehicles in its fuselage, land on the beach, deliver the vehicles. There was also, about the same time, from a completely different aircraft designer, the the VVA uh, 14. This was really a very odd aircraft in a lot of ways. Able to fly higher, it had more conventional wing, but you can see very unconventional fuselage uh, cockpit and so on. Those are inflatable um, sort of seaplane uh, float plane floats, I guess you could call them. I'm not really sure what to call that. It's it's really weird. And there are still Ekrano plan designs floating around um, from Russia. Uh, this is the A050 design. You see that it's essentially a modern interpretation of the A90. What's interesting about this is that China was supposedly going to uh, start building these about 10 years ago. Hasn't happened like so many things. Also note the tail with the twin vertical stabilizers supporting an extremely large uh, horizontal tail plane. That's typical of Ekrano plans. And quite distinctive. You don't see that arrangement on conventional aircraft, but you see it on quite a few Ekrano plan designs. This is the most famous Soviet one. The Loon carries missiles. I guess my cutaway of, of it, of course, drawn in MS Paint, should mention. If you'd like a video on uh, Soviet Ekrano plans, please let me know in the comments. But I'm going to move on to China. During the Cold War, China wasn't much involved in Ekrano plans at all. But from about 2000, so about the last 25 years, there's been a st steady stream of experimental types, mostly civilian. But if you look at the XTW4, there is in sort of military or, or nationalistic colors. And it has been associated with the Navy. 
These are all interesting designs. You can see they're quite small. And they really, although there's elements of commercial projects to, to sort of build ferries across lakes and things like this, it didn't really take off. But now we have this one. And this is, by comparison, something of a monster. It's also highly secretive. You can see it's in a military paint scheme, but there's no uh, national markings on it. There's a lot we don't know about it. So let's try to decipher it. This is the first image we had. Firstly, let's geolocate. I've been able to geolocate that, um, that site. So I just want to share that with you. Firstly, where is it? This is China, viewed on Google Earth. And the site is on Hainan in the South China Sea, the, an island at the southern tip of China. Um, that's interesting because it's not on in uh, Taihai Lake, which is in Wuxi. If I'm saying that wrong, I, I'm definitely saying it wrong. But it's near Shanghai. That lake is where 702 Institute is based, and that's where a lot of Ikrano plans have been tested. It's also not in the Bohai Sea. And I have an apology to make. I had casually commented and described it as the Bohai Sea Monster. That's a reference to Caspian Sea Monster. I wasn't meaning to suggest that it was definitely in the Bohai Sea. It wasn't. Instead, it's in the South China Sea. Bohai Sea is sort of a an inland sea almost. It's got very narrow entrance. It's completely territorial waters of China. Good place to practice, uh, to test things like this. But no, they're testing it in the South China Sea. This is where they were doing it, literally that pier. Um, that white tent is on that pier. Okay. It's actually the same location that this design has been tested. And this aircraft, although it's first flown in 2014, it's been tested on and off. And over the winter, December, January time this year, it was flying from the same pier as where this new one has appeared. That's partly how I figured out where it was from. Here's the pier in low resolution imagery from April. You can see a white um, uh, tent, I'd say, or hanger on the on the pier. I'm circling it with my mouse. I'm not sure if that's going to come out in the video or not. There it is. And here it is on the 27th of July. It's actually since been moved. I haven't got a good image to show you, but I can tell you that that is no longer there. It's a temporary structure probably to accommodate literally this Ikrano plan. And it did a pretty good job of hiding it. I don't have any satellite images to share. Note, just out of interest, these piers, um, the one the, the one that's nearer to where the white uh, hangar is, that's what's visible in the water. I've sort of drawn a box around it. Looks like fishnets or something. It's, it's the part of the reinforcing concrete rods or the rods that reinforce concrete of a pier that's under construction. But these base, or well, this base has been expanded greatly in recent years and still ongoing. It's probably going to become a comparatively major base. There are civilian activity there as well. Also should mention that the design is a little bit similar to some Western designs, particularly the Boeing Pelican from the early 2000s. That was a concept for an extremely large heavy lift Ekrano plan. More recently, the Liberty Lifter project um, continues that tradition, let's say. These are American. And you can see the, the high wing is not unknown in Ekrano plant designs. Also, it's got four engines. It's quite interesting because they're quite large. I initially, with only this image, wrote that they're most likely jet engines because of the very large exhaust you see there. I did notice, of course, that there are, is an additional intake above the engine, which is unusual for a jet engine, but possibly because of a spray uh, guard at the front of the engines. We'll come back to that. But we've since got a forward image, and I've done some sort of very basic enhancement to it here just on the contrast um, and lightness so that you can see a little bit better what the engines look like from the front. It does look like propellers. That's a little bit confusing because they're not visible at all in the, the first image and they're not conclusive. 
Having said that, it does look from the back very much like the engine on one of those experimental Ecrano plans that were tested about 15 years ago. It's a much smaller one. The engines are bigger than that. They're not the same model, but they're very similar in configuration. That was a piston engine, I believe, most likely. So quite interesting. However, I mentioned spray guards. What I think might it might also be is a jet engine, but with an unusual um, inlet arrangement designed to reduce the amount of water that, or to eliminate water being uh, spraying into the engines. That's an obvious problem you have with jet engines on seaplanes. But here's my revised sketch from a better angle, taking into account what we now know. I've Here I've drawn it with either piston or turbojet engines. I would guess piston actually, but it might be jet engines with a spray guard. It's inconclusive at this point. What do we make of it? It's probably a military transport. Military because it's painted grey. Transport because you see that the large door near the cockpit. That door is larger than you would need just for crew access. Having said that, it, again, not not conclusive. It's about the size of a business jet. It's quite a small aircraft in, in general terms. Big for an Ecrano plant. Definitely interesting. But it's not clear what the role is. Special forces transport, maybe. Patrol, maybe mention its business jet size it might be a subscale demonstrator it might be a a comparative a crano plan but not as large as the production designs it's leading to the longer wings and actually they're a bit swept they are they are unusual as I mentioned with the liberty lifter and the um and the other uh us project the pelican they're not unique to Ukraine plans. Several Ukraine plans have longer wings because it allows them to fly higher to get out of ground effect um, if the water's too too rough. But it's a compromise. Um, it's interesting. I would still describe it as a wings and ground effect, but its wings are a little bit more like a regular seaplane. And as I mentioned, there's still lots that's unclear about it, particularly the engines. We shouldn't pretend that we know too much. If it doesn't make sense, we just got to wait and see. Lastly, it is highly syncretive. I think that these photos have been leaked as opposed to just being um, truly candid photos. But, uh, and one thing that points to that, I think the white hanger was removed. It had finished testing before the photos were revealed. But all the same, China is able to build things in secret. If it wasn't for those photos, we wouldn't know about this, I don't think. Um, what else is there that we don't know about? The other big deal, I think, is the fact that China is building where other countries are just conceptualizing. The Liberty Lifter has literally just been cancelled. America is not building its heavy lift Ekrano plan. China, meanwhile, is at least prototyping, but possibly building... Um, much more ambitious Ukraine plans than anyone else in the world at the moment. This is typical. They do this with submarines and other things. It is not entirely surprising that China is ahead on this game and willing to experiment where other countries don't commit the money to prototypes and research and development. Thank you very much. I'm H. Sun. This was unscripted, unedited, really obvious, I know. But interesting times. Um, check out my website. I'll put something on this Ecrano plan there as well in due course. Thank you very much.